Welcome back to the Reverend Geek YouTube channel. We are continuing our series on how all of the Halloween movies are connected. And so, with this one, we are going to ask the question and answer. How is Halloween 3 connected to the series? Well, before we do that, first I would like to give a huge thank you for all who watched and commented on the first video in this series. I realized that a lot of what was said was a little too long in the tooth, and so I'm going to try to script more of everything out and want to keep the pacing and everything going. But thank you for all the comments. It's nice to see that... A lot of you out there are <laughs> asking the same questions, seeing the same things, and so my madness really isn't so much of a madness now, is it? So, let's ask this question, shall we? So if we're going to try to connect everything within the Curtis Pleasance films into one timeline, one whole thing that really gets a lot of looks from people is how does Halloween fit into this timeline? Now, originally you should know that John Carpenter set out to do Halloween 3 as a new chapter in an anthology series. In other words, he wanted to have these movies coming out yearly but with a different story not connected to the Michael Myers story itself he felt kind of trapped in doing Halloween 2 uh, to continue the story but with Halloween 3 he felt he had a whole new way of doing it that is why this story is the way it is there is no mention of Michael Myers and Laurie Strode except for one scene in the bar where Halloween is played as a movie of the week. So, how is this explained? Well, even in the Scream movies, as we know, we see that the Stab movies are a based-on series that retells what happened in the Scream movie. So, Stab 1 retells Scream 1, Stab 2 retells scream to and so on so why could this not be the situation within the halloween universe a movie has been made about the 1978 haddonfield murders and is named after the night they happened so we can see where this would be something that would entirely be plausible because how many times have we watched a event happen on TV and a movie follows within three months to a year later. Um, actors are hired for how they look and appear like the real life people. So it's not a hard w way of looking at this, but it's an interesting thing. Another thing to look at is this. Uh, next, if we look at the coven of Connell Cochran, um, they are very druidic in a way. In other words, uh, even though this movie is titled, is subtitled Season of the Witch, there is never really a connection mentioned to any kind of coven, if memory serves me right. So, why not have the Cult of Thorn connected to Cochrane's group. It is quite possible. We look at how these things are tied into one another because everything on both groups is uh, brought into San Wayne or Sam Hain or however you want to say that. Uh, when we look at Cochrane's henchmen, they are literal robots. The mysterious figure that sets Michael Free, the man in black, and kidnaps Jamie at the end of Halloween 5 seems robot robotic in his movements and machinations and such. In part 6 we learn a little more about exactly what this cult of Thorn is and even we are 
brought into the mark of Thorn, which is interesting in and of itself because we see that Michael has it on his body, and YouTuber The Shape Lurks has also released a video showing that the mark appears on Michael's mask in the Bloomhouse trilogy. Dr. Wynn, who heads the Cult of Thorn, even looks a little bit like Cochrane in a way. Maybe because the actors are both Irish. But we could say that maybe Wynn is Cochrane's son, or at the very least, a close relative. But both groups are bent on sacrifices, and one can speculate, too, that if Thorne is tied to Halloween 3, they may have thought Myers was dead, and so this interlude, this movie, serves in the dark time and also bridges the Thorne trilogy to Halloween 1 and 2. The madness of the mask plot is only in line with the madness of Michael to kill Stephen and then Danny become the new killer. And there, there was always going to be things that don't make sense, uh, even, even in the normalcy of the film itself. But at the end of the day, all things are tied together. All things make sense in a larger plot. And so, yes, sacrifice is the purpose of the group in Halloween 3 as it is in the Cult of Thorn. So, that being, we can really say that both are the same. Perhaps different, perhaps even a subgroup. But there is too much connective tissue here for it to be. In fact, one thing I will even point out is this. The music that John Carpenter worked for Halloween 3, the techno um, keyboard, if you will, was a new way of putting together the familiar Halloween theme. Instead of putting it together the way it was, he transferred notes into different positions, keeping the beat the same, but changing it up a little bit in how it sounds. However, when Cochrane leaves the room that Dr. Callis is in, we see that there is an interesting thing. The music reverts back to the original Halloween theme. Now, some would say it's because Halloween is on the TV. But usually, that music is meant to be a background sound. This becomes the main theme of the scene. And so, maybe even John Carpenter himself tagged both along. Or off. And it seems that the third station still runs the ad. So there's still going to be death. There's still going to be stuff that happens. <clears throat> Why this isn't discussed in the rest of the story is probably one of those just simple things. Nobody is putting one and one together. No one is no one is seeing any connection with Michael Myers, and we don't see any kind of connection until Halloween 6, where we meet the whole thing of the Cult of Thorn that has been building up with Halloween 4 and 5. So they could have done some more description. We know that there are deleted scenes for Halloween 6, and I'm sure some of those deleted scenes that I have seen could fit in more uh, with the supernatural aspect, especially if you've ever looked up the deleted scenes, you'll see that uh, Loomis would have the uh, scar or whatever you want to say for the, for the thorn symbol uh, transplanted supernaturally onto his arm but aside from that uh, I would say that it's it's just a simple thing of people not connecting one and two together plus also the time frame I would say that probably happens right at 1983 when the movie is made and Halloween um, 4 isn't made until 88 89 I, I can't remember off the top of my head but 
that's what I would say. It's, time has gone by and people are not putting one and one together. That's it for this episode. Know that in future videos we are going to explore Tommy Doyle and his connection between the whole series. What happened to Steven? That's another important point. And several other characters that reappear throughout the series. So, like and subscribe, leave a comment, and we'll see you next time.